We are back with another tier list today, and we'll be talking about the relief pitchers. We've been going position by position, ranking all the best cards in season one. So we got to end this bunch with the relief pitchers. And for those curious, I'm going to make one final video at the end of season one, updating the list and making any changes on the season one cards. So we can get a nice wrap up for that first season. And then when season two comes around, we'll do the same thing and go position by position. Let's hop on into the tier list and talk about our relief pitchers. So with relief pitchers, I think there is also a preference thing with pitching and choosing pitchers that you do the best with that always comes into play if you like sinker cutter maybe you just like outlier pitchers but in general i rank these pitchers based on their pitch mixes and their attributes and just how easy they are to pitch with i think most people are gonna like the relievers in that a and s tier and probably have most of their bullpen by now with those relievers but we go to the f tier and all of these cards without any boosts or anything are just okay if you're just starting off and you're looking to get some diamond relievers or solid lefties like AJ Minter. I mean, they have a place in the bullpen. All these guys are diamonds, by the way, except for a couple lefties I threw in there because there aren't that many. If you are just starting off, sometimes you don't know who the good lefties are to use that are some golds. We slide up to the D tier and you see Brooks Raley is in there along with Jose Alvarado and lower tier relievers. If you're, again, starting off the game, go for guys like Classe, Batista, and Helsley are good because they have some high velocity and they are a live series card. So if you're all going for those collection, we're stashing in the bullpen. These relievers are probably not relievers you'll be using long on their own. They're just lacking a little bit on the attributes or just don't have that great of a pitch mix. Building a team for ranked on, say, Hall of Fame difficulty, you need relievers that have a good pitch mix but also enough attributes. If you've got a big PCI against the pitcher because they have lower hits per nine, they're not going to be that beneficial. Now we go to the C tier and we have an interesting mix of guys in the C tier. Alexis Diaz and Edwin Diaz live series cards aren't that far off from each other. Alex is just really a worse version of Edwin Diaz, but, and I have Brent Hedrick in this tier. A lefty is nice for the bullpen, but I want to cover him because he is a good example of a reliever that's no more than like a middle tier pitcher. He gets value for being a lefty and there aren't that many diamond lefties in the game right now. Two of his fastballs are right around the same speed with the four seam and two seam. The splitter and slider are right around the same speed. He's essentially just a two speed pitcher. And I don't think there's any deception on him or anything. Thing. Really, this card's benefit is the 50 stamina. I'm going to use him as like a long reliever, but I don't think most people use relievers like that. But this is just an example of one of those middle tier relievers with middle of the road attributes and nothing really too crazy. And I think all of these cards in the C and D tier just don't have enough on the attributes or the pitch mix overall where you're going to be using them for too long. Now we go to the B tier, and this is where we start to see relievers that you probably want to use in your bullpen. I've got 92 Tyler Rogers there, and before you say anything, the walks per nine and the really slow velocity means he is going to dot. And he's coming from a submarine release. So a pitcher like this could actually be really effective to mix up with. Say you just pitched with like Bob Gibson, then you put this reliever in the bullpen. Good luck to your opponent trying to adjust to 85 mile per hour fastballs. I have the captain Trevor Hoffman here. I will say this card becomes a very good card when you actually use the captain boost, especially pairing with, with some of the reliever cards in this list. But on his own, he's not really that great. This card really just gets the benefit of being boostable. So you boost up the hits in case for 9 15. He becomes a very good reliever. I don't think S tier, but a very solid reliever, but he makes a lot of the other other relief pitchers that'll get boosted by this way better. So definitely consider running this captain card for your bullpen if you don't have one for your starting pitching. He actually makes a lot of relievers really good. And last reliever I want to quickly talk about is Camilo Doval because I do think he's a pretty good reliever, especially for people that can't hit velocity. But since I am ranking cards on that World Series push, I find that some of the Hall of Fame players can hit the velocity. And especially since the sinker and Cutter are that far off in the velocity, and Doval doesn't have that crazy sidearm release he used to have. I don't know what it is about this card. In my opinion, very easy to read for some reason. So I think he's a good example of who is in the B tier because these guys are pretty good in the attributes, have some pretty good pitch mixes, especially guys like Daniel Bard and Jonathan Loisga with outlier sinkers, but they don't have the entire pitch mix or the overall attributes to be lights out relievers. So I wouldn't be using them in high leverage situations unless you just don't have many players. Jump up to the A tier. And in the A tier, these are going to be some of the closing pitchers for people. These are the players that I would really be targeting for your bullpen if you have all the stubs in the world or you're trying to make a World Series push. Not all of them are going to be your closer type pitchers, but mixing in a few of these relievers is going to be very good in your bullpen. We've got 97 Lee Smith in 
here. And the thing I think that makes him so effective is the walks per nine. And in fact, he has like a pretty solid fork ball. He's not going to be a super good reliever. Like as you start getting a good bullpen, you probably don't want to put him in save situations. But the hits per nine is the only problem on this card. I think the pitch mix is good and he can be pretty good if you mix up that cutter and fork ball really well. I've got 99 Brian Wilson in here and he does have better attributes, but slightly is worse on the pitch mix. Doesn't have outlier on the fastball. Has a pretty good cutter to mix in with. If he had a downward break pitch, like a changeup, that would make this card very good. But Brian Wilson is one of those relievers where he could be pretty good. And I feel like that's the case with a lot of these A tier guys. They can be very good, but good hitters will hit against these guys somewhat based on the attributes or their overall pitch mix, where they're going to be effective in many cases cases and going back to the list here your big lefties like billy wagner gregory soto sean doolittle are some of your best lefties in the game right now and i almost forgot to talk about andrew chafin andrew chafin even though he's a 92 overall is great i love his release point got a nice little sinker he has enough on the attributes to be a very good lefty. I'd really recommend him for your bullpen. Summary of the A tier, probably will be most of your bullpen as you are making a World Series push. And I think these are good guys to use. Probably not the most reliable relievers in the game though. And finally, we have the S tier. The S tier is definitely tough for these relievers. For example, Devin Williams, always a nice quirky reliever, maxed out hits and Ks per nine. He has the screwball, which is nice. But the fact he only has three pitches, and you know, not the best control on those three pitches means that Devin Williams isn't gonna dot. Doesn't have that many pitches to hit. If he had a circle change like last year, he'd have been incredible. But I have Eric Gagne in here. He does have the outlier four seam. He has a nice mix of breaking balls. He definitely is a very effective reliever when you are really changing speeds effectively. And that really loopy curveball is a very underrated pitch. But again, it, even though he's one of the best relievers in the game, I don't know if this is a pitcher that just lights out for many people. And then there's Josh Hader. And again, Josh Hader's a pretty good lefty reliever. I think he's the thing that keeps his card from really being an incredible must use is the fact that he only has three pitches. While these are, in my opinion, the best relievers in the game, I really think that A and S tier kind of mesh with each other. And these guys just bring the best mix of pitch mix and attributes in the game that I think are going to find the most success for people. But again, you look at these A and S tier relievers, I think most bullpens will have these guys maybe sprinkled with a couple guys in the B tier. I've seen a lot of people go for Trevor Hoffman with the captain boost and using reliever cards. And that does allow certain cards like Chafin, Diego Castillo, Gregory Soto, and all those guys to take another level, which I think is great. And if you like a lot of relief pitcher cards, I say you go that route for someone like me who does doesn't like a lot of those pitchers. I'm going to get guys like Devin Williams, Eric Gagne and such and use them in my bullpen. But yeah, that is the relief pitcher tier list. The relief pitchers are weird because there aren't that many in the game, but at least with this new content style, there are a lot of pretty good ones out there for you to use. And hopefully this list help you decide which one to actually use in your team. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. I appreciate you all watching. And we'll get ready to do our last tier list for season one here next week. I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you again on next one.